Yeah, good afternoon, Tom. It's afternoon here in Lagos, Nigeria. And I want to appreciate everyone for joining, for signing up uh, for this uh, webinar with the legendary uh, Tom Peters. Uh, Tom is someone I so much uh, hold in high esteem. Um, I remember how I came um, across um, Tom's writing, uh, Tom's work. That was when I was an undergraduate at the University of Ibadan. About 20 years ago, I, I bought this book. And I must say that this book actually um, has shaped my thoughts and my thinking uh, around Tom's work and around uh, business management generally. So here we are. Um, Maybe I should just do a few seconds introduction. I know a lot of us here, we probably might have read or heard about Tom. Tom Peters is the co-author of In Search of Excellence, uh, this book that I'm holding. Uh, this book has changed the way the world does business and is often tagged as the best business book ever. I mean, if you go out there, you see so many, you read so many things about, a lot has been said about Tom. Uh, I, I know that uh, Inc. Magazine tags some Tom as the Red Bull of management. And um, over the last 40 years, uh, Tom has made around 2,500 speeches uh, in about 550 American states, about 67 countries, uh, to about 5 million people. You can see that uh, I, my guest today is very legendary. Um, also, he has written about 20 books. Uh, and I must say, Tom, I have about, so I said that uh, you are so legendary. Uh, I have about, out of your 20 books, I have about 14 with me here. Um, I remember uh, when I bought this, The Passion of Excellence. I, I, I mean, this came after In Search of Excellence. Uh, the, Tom, the Pursuit of Wow, Tom Peter's Seminar. Uh, thriving on chaos, and also uh, the reimagine uh, one of your very big, uh, you know, books. So Tom has written a lot, a lot and lot and lot. And let me say that Tom has sold about more than ten million copies uh, of his books. And about a few years ago, it was named to the thinkers list uh, of the world's top business thinkers. So, but today. There are four key things that uh, Tom and I will discuss. Uh, one, we'll discuss about Tom's career over the years. Um, yeah, Tom has done a lot. Uh, we'll also discuss his leadership lessons uh, over the last 50 years. I mean, we, we can pick a lot from Tom. Then also uh, business excellence. Let's even understand what excellence is in business. Then women's leadership. I know you, Tom's talk a lot about women's leadership, uh, that women are actually the untapped number one leadership resource all over the world. Then of course also uh, personal branding. Let me say here that Tom actually started the concept around personal branding. And I know that uh, we'll touch on some of these things in the, la in the next um, 30 minutes or, or, or thereabout. So Tom, let, let's quickly start uh, because of our time. Uh, would you like to tell us, um, everyone here, about your career journey, uh, your challenges, uh, the challenges you faced, the experiences uh, that have helped you build this robust career uh, and, and, and successful life uh, over, the, over the past 50 years? Over to you, Tom. Well, that's a that's a big question. Obviously, uh, I'll jump fast through it. I was initially trained as a civil engineer. Uh, I was in the Navy because the Navy paid my way through college. I went back and got a business degree because I didn't know what else to do with my life. Uh, I went to work for the consultancy. McKinsey, and that's when all the things that people know about started. I had just gotten a PhD from the Stanford Business School on the topic of organization effectiveness. 
And I got to McKinsey and McKinsey's big boss said, we design all these incredibly intelligent strategies and companies can't execute them. What's going on? And so my colleague, Bob Wooderman and I, and Bob, alas, passed away just this year. My colleague, Bob Wooderman and I went out and looked for companies that were getting it done as opposed to just talking about it. And we ended up, I think, with about 43 of them. And that got translated into a book. And our timing was excellence. And the rest is history. There are 19 additional books. But as I have said to people, I would love you to buy all 20 because then I'd get the royalties. But the real <laughs> truth is that all 20 of them say exactly the same thing. The world of business, capitalistic business, is not all about money. It is not all about profit. It is all about one and only one thing, and that is people. I mean, take one example from where you are, and I know I'm not perfect on this, but I'm pretty close. There was a big, big, big study about people being engaged with their work. And the stunning thing from the study is there was absolutely positively no difference anywhere in the world. Two thirds of people are not engaged. Two thirds of people show up and try to get the day behind them as quickly as they can. And that is obviously not the path to excellent work. Awesome, 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 uh, Tom. Um, that's fantastic. I, I love the, um, we'll come back to that actually. The, there's, there's a question that I want to ask and it has to do with leadership. Um, I often I often make this um, joke to people that uh, if there's one alien or if there's an alien that comes to the earth today uh, to take all our leaders away, unfortunately, we don't have enough leaders uh, who can take, uh, I mean, the, the, the places of these leaders who probably have been taken away by the uh, by this alien. Let me ask you, uh, what is the future of leadership uh, as you have seen it? Uh, from where you're coming from, um, from the event of COVID that happened, of course, um, a lot of people have said that it, it's, a, it's a black swan event. But from where we are right now, what can you see uh, about leadership in the next 10 years or, or thereabouts? Well, I've always argued, and I said this in my introduction, that people come first. And the reality is nothing has changed and nothing will change. Google, which is obviously as tech a company as exists, did a study of their best employees and their most innovative managers. And they came up with eight factors associated with success and seven out of the eight factors, the top seven factors had to do with people. people. Listening, mm -hmm. no bullying, respecting diversity and things like that. And that's Google. So yes, it mm -hmm. is 2022. Yes, there is a technology revolution going on which will only accelerate. But at the end of the day, the work gets done by people, the innovation gets done by people, and the first and foremost role of the leader is to was develop you? people, period. Hmm. That, was, that, was, that was true hmm. in 1922 and 1822, and now it's still true in 2022. And it, that, hmm. there's a lot that comes out of that. For example, relative hmm. to your question, one of the biggest problems is hiring or promoting. Hmm. If you want people who are interested in people, hire people who have been interested in people. Not the person with hmm. a fancy degree, not the person with a fancy hmm. grade point average, not the fancy, hmm. fancy looking or sounding job. Hire people who enjoy people. 
And that's the first thing that the hiring person in HR or anywhere else ought to be worrying about. There's a guy who runs a big biotech company in the US and he said, well, we have a hiring secret. And that secret is we only hire nice people. And now that's really interesting because it's not coming from a hotel person. It's not coming from a restaurant person. It is coming from somebody in an insanely high tech arena, biotech. And yet he says, we only hire nice people, nice people for research, nice people for finance, people who get along with others. It can be done, but you have to start at the beginning. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, I'd like to put up my screen, uh, Tom. Uh, there's something, I mean, I kept receiving uh your newsletters during the covid period in fact i must i must admit here that uh you were a source of um emotional courage for me uh during the covid time thank you for that L let thank me you. put up my screen uh I, I want us to quickly look at your commandment uh you have said right now i i, I love that uh, we, I don't know if you can see my screen. Can I have my screen, please? I can see your screen, yeah. Tom, but the, Tom, see my screen. By putting the screen every on, other person the audio has screen. gone bad. So what I think um, one, of the, uh, one of the things that you may want to do is uh, perhaps, um, d you know, while we're waiting for Adedoyan, you may want to discuss, uh, you know, what prompted you to uh, come up with these leadership commandments or talk about a couple of them and, uh, and how you see these as being important for, for leaders? So are people listening to me then right now? Yes, they are. Oh, okay, all right. Yes, I, 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 yes, yes, they are. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. well, my wife, who initially was a yeah, tablet. Tom, please go ahead. Yeah, please no, go I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm talking. Yes, can everyone can hear me. Yes, everyone can hear Yes, me. I can hear you. I can personally hear you. Everyone can hear you. We can hear you. We can okay. hear you. Yes, we okay. can hear you, Tom. Yes, we can. Yes. Right. Mm. Where did this list come from? I was sitting in the office one day basically doing nothing a month or two after the pandemic began. And I thought, this is the dumbest thing in the world. You probably have something to say because the things that I had always talked about, taking care of people were now suddenly 10 times more important. And so this list just came out of the blue. But what I said and believed for leaders, you may have a 30 or a 40 year career, but the way you behave towards your fellow human beings during the pandemic mm -hmm will be the signal of the effectiveness and thoughtfulness and moral value of your adult life. This is a big, big, big deal. Yes, we have to try to get some work done. Yes, we're learning how to use Zoom. Yes, there is business going on. But fundamentally, the game is about, the world is about, treating people well in the midst of a once every, we think, God help us if it's not true, a once every century event. And so how you do this, the way you work with people during this thing, that's it. That's the beginning. That's the end. That is the signature of your adult life. And that signature is a positive signature. If you helped people get through it and grow, it is a negative outcome if you acted like the jerky boss who says, now we've all got to get to the Zoom meeting on time. Yeah, I know you got three kids at home and we're just beating you up, but we got work to do. I mean, that, that kind of leader ought to be dumped in the garbage can. 
My apologies here. It seems that we're having some technical difficulties for Adedoyan. And so uh, I'll be just uh, advising Tom in for just a moment, if you'll excuse us. Okay, you can go ahead and unmute him. He is he's just going to take a drink of water here and he'll be ready to go. Oh, okay, great, great, great. Uh, yeah. There we go. How's okay. my sound? Oh, yeah, you're sounding well. You're fine. How about you're fine, Tom? And the video are both okay? Yeah, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, are you fine too? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, great, great. Yeah, so um, let me talk about the women's leadership, like I was uh, trying to talk about before I was uh, thrown off. Uh, you, you, you've always said that you've always insisted that women are better managers than men. And in fact, you said this, that um, uh, women are number one untapped leadership resource anywhere in the world, all over. But how do you think businesses, most importantly, uh, can pay more attention to the leadership development of women? Well, let's begin with what in a way is the most important item. Mm. This is not my opinion. This is mm. not something I quote unquote want to happen. This mm. is all based on extensive and mm. solid research. Research, absolutely. It is totally based on research. Mm. And, mm. you know, in my books, I cite, cite study after study after study, mm. which says mm. women are better leaders. Now, let me make one thing clear, because people hear this wrong. I'm mm. not saying that all women are better than all men. I am saying mm. that on average, women are better mm. than men. There are awful women as managers. There are incredible men as average, as managers. Mm. But on average, mm. women mm. do better than men. They tend to mm. listen better. They tend to be more thoughtful. They don't tend to scream mm. and yell and shout. They don't interrupt <laughs> the people at meetings and a hundred mm. other things. But uh, mm. again, it's, it's hard research, solid research. I cannot... Mm talk honestly with you and give you the Nigerian results, but I can tell you that this has been repeated in country after country after country. <laughs> We're looking for that to actually play out in our, in our space. So that's why I'm actually asking that question. Yeah. Well, and you know, the line from that, that is, is also, I think, proven. And the uh, head of the World Bank said this at one point, if you are in a so-called developing country, the single most significant thing that you can do for national improvement is invest in the education of girls and women. Women. Hmm. Awesome. I mean, that's 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 wonderful. Yeah. So let, let me quickly well, let me, ask. No, um, take one other. Let me take one other. Okay. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Yunus won a Nobel Prize for starting micro lending. All right. Mm. And most of that was initially in developing countries. Country, yeah. Dr. Yunus had no bias toward men or women. Mm. But what he discovered as things unfolded was hmm. that men would take the money and they would tend <laughs> to waste it. They would gamble it away. <laughs> and women took the money and they invested, and invested. in the community. Hmm. And, 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 hmm. and so in the end, he did not want this. He did not plan this. But in the end, 90% of the micro loans went to women women 
Hmm. Awesome. I mean, that's perfect. I, I totally agree with that. Let's quickly talk around personal branding. There are two things we'll talk about. Uh, personal branding, then uh, how you are also reinventing yourself, uh, because uh, that's one concept I also learned from you. So the, the, the concept of personal branding actually uh, was proposed by you. I remember also uh, reading that article in the first company of 1997, as in when it was um, it was published in 1997, I, I read it sometimes around 2006 or thereabout, um, where you gave an idea of how people um, could brand themselves, um, professionals really. So as I then there was no there was no internet. Let me put it that way. Yes, where did that idea? Where, where, where did where did it come from? Well. I have to describe it in American terms, and then you will have to make the translation if necessary. In the US, the typical situation was you went to work for a company and you went to work for them at the age of 20, and assuming that you behaved well, Assuming that you did nothing stupid, the odds were high that you would stay there for the next 40 years and retire. Hmm. And if that is the case, then what you have to stand for is not excellence, but showing up, not being bad, hmm. getting your work done. There's nothing that distinguishes you from a lot of other people. And people. Hmm. people really, and it's my fault because I'm the author, people really screwed up the hmm. personal branding idea. Absolutely. It was not about personal marketing. Hmm. It was about hmm. becoming really good at something. You hmm. work in a company, and this is true today, and there are a hmm. lot of teams working on projects. And hmm. three of those 11 teams have fabulous leaders and they're getting things done. And you would give hmm. your left arm to be on one of those three teams. Well, the way hmm. you get recruited for one of the three teams is that you've done great work in the past. You've been a great hmm. teammate. It's not that you go out and buy a horn at the local store and start saying, I'm Tom, I'm Tom. It's exactly hmm. the opposite. Hmm. Hmm. People say, hey, they say to me, I'm starting a team, hmm. okay? I'm the, starting this new team. And they, and they say, hey, you know, listen, you guys got a lot of work to do. And, and George, George over there, I've watched George. George is amazing. You're an idiot if you don't get hmm. George on your team. But that's because hmm. of the way George has done in recent projects, hmm. not because hmm. George basically is a loud mouth saying I'm brand George. <laughs> i know i know so it's been taken out of context out of your initial proposition right well no i wasn't smart enough hmm. i don't want to blame others i want to blame myself hmm. it hadn't occurred to me that what hmm. i just told you would be the translation I thought it was hmm. obvious. And what I said in the article, it means getting very, very good at something so you're recognized as being special. Hmm. That's what hmm. I said in my words. Hmm. But the hmm. thing that went wrong with the article, uh, it hadn't been on my radar. So hmm. I take complete blame for having had it been having had it be misinterpreted. Hmm. Hmm. I know, I know, I know. So, 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 ju just another right to that, um, which I want to say, uh, what I want to ask is that uh, in the age of AI, um, artificial intelligence, digitization, and all that we have right now, uh, how do you think everyone uh, can stand out during this period? Well, let's be honest there is an incredible amount of uncertainty. And Absolutely. the technology is moving very fast. Very fast. It is hmm. possible 
than not maybe that unlikely for the 25 year old to watch a lot of jobs evaporated and be done by artificial intelligence. So the mm -hmm. answer is, I don't have a clue as to what's going to be going on in 2042. But let's mm. stick with that, okay? Mm. You say, well, mm. what's gonna happen in 2042? And you know what my response to you is? My mm. question is, what's gonna happen to you on the 12th of May, 2022? How are you gonna mm. stand out now? How are no. you going to do fabulous work now? How are you going to develop mm. a network now? And the mm. people in your network will help you adapt to the new technology as it comes along. But and it's not because mm. of my age. I'm not interested in the long term. Right mm. now, this minute, mm. there is mm. only one thing in my life that matters. And that is mm. the conversation that you and I are having. I, I don't know what the mm. next hour brings. But right mm. now, you and I are devoting a half an hour to talk about things mm. that we think are important. And so doing mm. my very, very, very best based on decades of experience in these 30 mm. minutes is the only mm. thing that matters to me. Mm. 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 Tom, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, let me ask the final question uh, because of our time. Uh, it's very simple. I would have loved to continue to ask more. And I know that if we had to stay here, we won't, uh, we won't end this conversation. So how are you reinventing yourself? How are you reinventing yourself? Well, my mother turned me into a reader at a very young age. And I've been reading every, ever since. I was at dinner a year or so ago with a famous investment banker. And at some point in the middle of the dinner, he said, Tom, what do you think the number one failing is of CEOs? Now, that's a big question. And you could probably think of 10 answers, and so could I. And I said, well, you tell me what yours is. And this is what came out of his mouth. They don't read enough. R-E-A-D, read. In other words, what I'm hmm. saying is that I reinvent myself to the extent that I can by being a good student. The same way hmm. I was at the age of 10 or the age of 19. And you know, there are many ways to do it. You can, you can listen to podcasts, you can be part of, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is, you are always attempting to learn. You are always attempting to learn from people who are adapting pretty darn well to the crazy future. And particularly in today's world, where there are one jillion podcasts, and probably a, tens of thousands of them are in fact very good, there is a unique opportunity to learn new things. And so it's, am I reinventing myself? You know, the minute we finish this conversation, I'm gonna read a couple of the, sorry, listen to a couple of podcasts that I listened to this time of the week. And so, yeah, reinvention is permanent. Hmm. Reinvention is permanent. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Tom. Uh, maybe you have a word to say to all uh, the listeners today. Do, do you have a parting word for, for us um, as people? Well, let me say one thing. Is that I have given speeches in 67 countries. Rich countries, poor countries, etc. And I will be the first to acknowledge that there are significant cultural differences. Huh. But there are basically no cultural differences when it comes to the people stuff. Huh. You showed my little card for COVID where I said, yeah. be kind, be caring, be patient, be forgiving, be, be present, be positive, huh. walk in the other person's huh. shoes. 
That works in Nigeria, it works in Mexico, it works in Ethiopia, it works in South Africa, it works in the United States. Those are universal mm. traits that have to do with helping people develop. There was mm. a fellow who won an Academy Award in the US and he gave a mm. speech accepting it. He was a director and he said, the role of the director is to create a place where people can be better than they have ever been before, better mm. than they have dreamed of being. And that mm. is the leader's role as a fourth grade teacher or somebody mm. running a company of 2000 people. Mm. You know, you start mm. a restaurant, what do we want? Sure, we want people who have technical skills, but we want people who are excited, people who are kind, people who are helpful, people who are energetic. That's what I want as a restaurant owner. Mm. You know, anybody can cook good food, not anybody <laughs> can make the place incredibly attractive for customers. Uh, awesome. Uh, very true. Very true. Mm. Very true. Very true. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, I, I want to appreciate you for uh, for this. Um, I, I'm so excited. I know for almost uh, for almost a year we've been trying to set this up, and eventually this has happened today. I, I want to thank you so much, Tom. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. And I know that if there are questions, I'm going to send some of those questions to your team. And if you have the time, we will really appreciate Great. if you can help us solve some of those, um, answer some of those questions. Once well, again, I have, I have enjoyed the time enormously. And you really have, as far as I'm concerned, taken me down the path of, to talk about the things that I really think are important. Hmm. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much. I'm very Thank you. Grateful. Thanks. Yeah. Shall yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's the end of my session with Tom Peters. Um, some other time, I'll get across to you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. My, my pleasure.